So welcome to worship this morning. I'm Lynn Bartlow. I'm the lead pastor here. I'm Kim Ogle. I'm the associate pastor. We welcome you to worship. If you didn't, did not use the iPads to sign in on, the, um, at, on your way in, we encourage you to reach right out and grab the green piece of paper that's in front of you and sign in uh, your attendance on one of those green pieces of paper and put it in the offering plate when it comes by later on in the service. You could also point your smartphone to the QR code on the screen and sign in your attendance there. Those of you who are online, we welcome you as well. You can use this QR code or go to our website uh, to sign in your attendance. There are announcements in your bulletin. We encourage you to take note of them. I wanted to highlight two. The first is um, on Wednesday, we have the marksmen. Uh, you gentlemen are welcome, invited to come for breakfast and a program to talk about our general conference that's coming up at the end of April and what that means for the United Methodist Church and, and whatnot. So come on um, Saturday morning. Sorry, Wednesday morning, if you'd like to join us for that. And next Sunday at 3 p.m., we are having a uh, town hall meeting, state of the church, this is how things are going kind of meeting here at St. Mark's. And so we invite anybody who wants to come hear more about um, our last 18 months working with the church consultant, um, what we've accomplished and what's next uh, to join us for that town hall meeting. So I want to invite you to Soul Station, our midweek service. On Wednesday, we meet in the Fellowship Hall, which is right across. Um, and we start with a meal at 5.30. This, um, this Wednesday at Soul Station, we're going to continue the Eastern story. Yes, there's more. So <laughs> come and find out. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let, Let us, us rejoice, rejoice and, and be glad, glad in it. it. We start worship every uh, Anytime that we're worshiping together with that verse, it's from Psalm 118, so that we remember whose we are and why we've come to worship. Welcome again. Thank you. 
Good morning. Good morning. My name is Rich Howell. Please stand and body or spirit and join me in the call to worship. Beloved church, behold the victory of our God. Jesus Christ, our Lord, has conquered the grave. Sin and death shall reign no more. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Let this place resound with joy. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Alleluia. We praise you, God, for the power of your saving love revealed in the resurrection of our Lord. We wait with gladness for your new heaven and new earth. As you raise Jesus from the dead, give us the gift of everlasting life, that we may worship you forever. Through Christ, our risen Savior, amen. amen. Now let us join in the opening hymn. of you remember that when um, Lent first started, Lent is um, the days before Easter, so when Lent first started, 
we came down and put these cards in this box. They say hallelujah on them. And hallelujah is a praise thing. So um, not that we didn't praise during Lent, but we took the happy songs out, the hallelujah, um, Christ is here, because we're waiting for Jesus. We're waiting for um, Easter Sunday. So when we did that, we t everybody had a card, and they put a hallelujah card in here. And it's been sitting on my desk, and we had the lid on it, and we didn't let any of those hallelujahs escape while we were waiting for Easter. <laughs> because Easter is a joyous time. We get to celebrate that, um, that Jesus was born, that Jesus um, taught us things, and that Jesus died on the cross for us so that, we could, um, so that we could be closer to God and we could kind of think for ourselves. So we're bringing back the hallelujahs. Yay! You just heard a really upbeat song, Christ the Lord is, is um, risen today. So we're going to have all those hallelujahs back in our music. Um, the choir has done a fantastic job during Lent, but they didn't say hallelujah. So you guys get to take a card with you if you want to. You don't have to. Can we start over here? And you, got, you can just slide the box, okay? The box that says hallelujah. All right. Your moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas can help you with that word too, okay? So let's have a, a quick prayer. God, we thank you for this whole season, for the time that we um, spent during Lent waiting for you and, um, and studying about your last days, your son's last days on earth. And we thank you for this joyous, joyous Easter Sunday when we get to hear um, our choir and the brass and all the wonderful music and mostly when we we get to be together with our friends and with people who also love you watch over us please god in the coming week be with these children and help them grow closer to you in your son's name we pray amen amen thank you for coming down happy easter good morning everyone happy easter uh, we would be delighted for you to sing with us um, on the special music today, Joy to the Heart. Please listen closely to the first couple of verses so that you can get that melody in your head. And um, Paul will put the, the words on the screen for y'all, and you are welcome to stand and sing, um, sing our final verses. Uh, you are also invited to sing the Hallelujah Chorus with us at the end.
Thank you. That was beautiful. Would you join me in prayer? God, on this Easter morning, we gather to sing our, your praises, to hear the Easter story, and to proclaim the miracle of the resurrection. You have given us your beloved Son, who came to earth to show us your love. We have waited all these 40 days since Ash Wednesday to greet Easter and celebrate this holy event with joy. Many things can happen in 40 days. Waiting is hard, God. We imagine the women of the Mark scripture waiting through Saturday and the Passover meal to return to the tomb where, unknown to them, they would be greeted by the risen Christ. Let us learn patience and faith in your plan from this part of the Easter story. Many of us would love to be as bold as Peter when he shared the stories of his travels with Jesus, with the Gentiles, but we confess that we are not always diligent in sharing our faith and that we are sometimes influenced more by society than by the witness of the life of Christ. We listen to people who make us feel inadequate or less than, forgetting that we are your beloved children. How can we ignore your unconditional love when you gave your only son who has already paid for our sins? Forgive us, Lord, when we fail to acknowledge your gifts of love, grace, and mercy. Help us to fully accept your grace and show the same to others. Lord, your son was merciful and loving even to the cross. Remind us of that when we haphazardly dismiss others, when we fail to treat all of our brothers and sisters with respect. We pray that the injustice of prejudice will someday be eradicated. God, we pray for those who are sick and in need of medical care, whether they are recuperating at home or are in the hospital. We ask for healing and comfort. Be with their caregivers and the medical professionals who give care. Give them wisdom and compassion. We pray for those who mourn this day. As resurrection people, we know that our loved ones were welcomed into the arms of Jesus. Our faith gives us that reassurance. Thank you for loving us so much. For all of our blessings on this Easter morning, we give you thanks and praise. In the name of your beloved Son, who gave us his own life so that we may have hope and the life full of abundant faith in your steadfast love, we join by, in prayer by singing the, the, um, the Lord's Prayer that Jesus taught us.
In our first reading today, we meet Peter, who is speaking to a Gentile congregation. He tells the words and the witness of Jesus Christ. Hear these words from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the providence of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism of John that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. We, wit we are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross but God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he was the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. And our gospel reading today finds the women at the empty tomb, but ends with confusion. Hear these words from Mark 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go tell the disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the word of God for the people of God. God. When's the last time you felt amazement and trembling? When we went to Disneyland a few years ago, I was shocked by the Incredicoaster, which used to be called California Screamin'. I'm a Floridian, not a Westerner, so I didn't know this. How many of you have ridden that roller coaster? Okay, a few of you. I was shocked by this roller coaster. This was a new thing for me, and I found myself laughing and enjoying it every second of it. It was a fabulous, new, surprising, wonderful roller coaster for me. We had the same experience a few years later, uh, and riding the new Velocicoaster at Universal Studios in Orlando. How many of you read, have ridden the Velocicoaster? Yeah, yeah, a few more of you have traveled to Florida in the last year or so. Well, this is, it, this is a great roller coaster. It's fabulous. It's fast. And just when you don't think that this roller coaster can get any better, it does. It surprises you. It amazes you with another twist that leaves you trembling, a little dizzy, but trembling <laughs> and amazed that you were going, how fast on this roller coaster? Have you felt something that left you amazed and trembling. Maybe the breathtaking beauty of the Grand Canyon the first time you saw it. Maybe an unexpected, incredibly unexpected gift that someone gave you. Maybe it was a perfect evening with friends and family. 
Sometimes this can leave you, sometimes it's not good news that leaves you trembling. It's a bad phone call with bad news or an email telling you all the things you've done wrong. It's that time that you're waiting for the diagnosis from the doctor. It's those moments right after the boss calls you into his office. Our story today shares this experience of amazement and trembling that the women experienced. Mark shares that three women came to the tomb on that Sunday morning. The Sabbath is over. They're arriving to be respectful to Jesus. They were at the cross, and then they returned to the tomb on this day to anoint his body for burial. Now, the reaction of the women when they arrive is surprise. They're amazed. They're trembling at what they experience. They encounter this encounter on Easter morning changed everything for them, and it changes everything for us. Will you pray with me? God, we come to you trembling and amazed by great music, by a full sanctuary, by the wondrous gifts that we receive from you. We come, O oh God, seeking your face. Move among us, move within us. Move your spirit that we might know your message for us this day. Move in me that my words may be yours. In your name we pray, amen. How well do you embrace change? We've lived through a lot of change since 2020, haven't we? But despite all the outer changes, I believe that most of us are actually longing for or even eager for change now. Some of us are eager to change back to what used to be before doctor's appointments, before the family argument, before the move to a new place, before the pandemic. Some of us are eager for a change to a simpler way of life, an end to the busyness and the hectic pace that we find ourselves in. Some of us even kind of liked the changes the pandemic brought and wish for the day of no school obligations and long family dinners. Some of us are simply longing for a change within, for an answer to our restlessness or for a new purpose in our life. Whether you long for change or simply wish we could change back to what we used to have, we are faced in our Easter story with the fact that the world changes with this story. It changed the lives of the disciples, those who followed Jesus. It changed the political landscape of the world. It changed the social norms of the community, and it changed the lives of the women who came to the tomb. Easter is a continuation of a story that Mark has been telling throughout the first 15 chapters of his writing. Jesus is bringing good news that will change the world. Jesus brings good news through his actions and his teachings that change the lives of the people that he meets and in turn change the world. But as Jesus dies, we're left with the question of whether Jesus was just a good teacher or if his life will change the world. Is this new life over? Does the old win? Or is there hope for us? Let's dig into the story a little bit. Jesus is dead. Now, that seems like I shouldn't have to say this, but let's be clear. Jesus is dead. He's not mostly dead. <laughs> you know, there's a big difference between mostly dead and all dead. Mostly dead is slightly alive. With all dead, well, with all dead, there's usually only one thing you can do. Go through his clothes and look for change. <laughs> Those of you who are laughing may hear Billy Crystal in your head, you know, Princess Bride. If you didn't laugh and don't know, then go watch Princess Bride. While Wesley the pirate was mostly dead, Jesus was all dead. And they've already gone through his clothes looking for lost change. They've buried him. He's dead. The story is over. The hope is over. The disciples have gone home to figure out how to live their lives pre-Jesus. The women, on the other hand, go to the tomb to anoint his body. It's another part of the grief process. Another hope dashed. Another disappointment. They go to the tomb knowing what to expect. Who's going to roll away the stone? Who's going to help us open the tomb? 
But when they arrive, they don't encounter the expected. They encounter the unexpected. There's a young man in a white robe who tells him that their hopes are real. The story isn't over. And like my first ride on those roller coasters, the women are amazed. The women are bewildered. They're frightened. They're utterly amazed and struck with terror. The women were affrighted. They were startled, they were dumbfounded, they were panic-stricken, they were shocked with astonishment. It's fun sometimes to see how many different ways the different Bible translations treat one word. All of those were examples. These women didn't expect to find this. It was a new thing, and their shock and their panic and their amazement and their affrightedness was really kind of reasonable. The angel tries to reassure them Jesus was dead, all dead, not mostly dead, and now he's not. Go and tell the others. This is good news. This is exciting. And what do they do? They're amazed and they're trembling and they're alarmed. You know, it's been a long few days. The parade into Jerusalem, the Passover meal with Jesus, giving a new command and washing their feet and giving body and blood. The prayers in the garden, the arrest, the trial, the crucifixion. It's been a long week. And then an angel. These women are amazed and they're trembling and they're affrighted. Today, 2,000 years plus after this event, we can forget what a big deal this really was. The world has celebrated Easter as long as we've been alive. We know the end of the story. It's easy for us to forget the roller coaster ride that it was for the women and the disciples and the other followers. You see, we often forget that this event, this Easter morning, changed everything. Nobody had ever been risen from the dead. This changed everything. It changed what we know about the cosmos. Jesus, who was all dead, is now alive. Death is not the end. Wait, this changes everything. There's new life after death? Mind blown. It changes the cosmos. Easter changes what we know about the social order. Women were once relegated to support roles are now given the job to lead the disciples. The normal divisions of the social order no longer work. They're old, they're expired, they are changed. Social order has changed. Easter changes what we know about the spiritual life. Before this, you went to the temple, you asked for forgiveness, you sacrificed what you were told to. You had to beg for forgiveness. Easter changes what we know about this. Those we know of as betrayers and abandoners are fully invited to the new life. People who are sinners are fully invited to God. Did you notice in the stories of Easter that Jesus does not come for revenge? I'm gonna say it again. Jesus does not come for revenge. He's not angry that Peter denied him. He's not angry that Judas betrayed him. He's not angry that everybody left him there on the cross to die. Everyone is fully forgiven. Everyone is fully forgiven. No special steps needed, no sacrifices needed, no magic words to say, boom, you're forgiven. And in fact, Jesus is eager to be with them, even Peter. Go and tell them I'll meet them. Go and tell them I'll meet them, the women are told. Friends, our story changes everything. No longer does sin keep you apart from our God who loves us. Everything changes. And yet it doesn't, does it? Everything changes, but we don't see that change in an instant. I love the Gospel of Mark. I love the way Mark tells the resurrection story. You see, we stopped reading where the earliest manuscripts end. The last word in the earliest re- writings of Mark says that the women didn't tell everybody, anyone because they were afraid. The end. 
Now, most people aren't happy with that ending, and so later editors added the rest of the story, but this original ending of Mark is where we stop today, and I love this ending. It's not a happy story. It doesn't tie everything up in a neat package with a bow on it. It just ends, and I love it. Mark is challenging us. Mark is challenging us to finish the story. If the resurrection changes everything, then what's the end of the story? Does it change us? We, will we have faith and hope for a new life? Will we change how we relate to others? Will we change how we live in society and in our community, knowing that Jesus, who was all dead, is now alive? Jesus has decided that nothing will keep us from him, even death. Will we decide the same? Will we accept the full forgiveness that Jesus offers to us? We are fully forgiven, fully loved. Will we receive that gift from Jesus? One of the traditions I love at St. Mark's is that our youth who are seniors in high school are invited to preach at our sunrise service. Today, Liam compared the Bible to Star Wars. My, my husband would be proud. <laughs> Liam reminded us that Anakin Skywalker chooses to do good and saves the galaxy by defeating evil. And he compared that to the story of Jesus. That's what Jesus does, is it not? And this is a great message, but let's, let's push it a little bit further. After Luke and Anakin defeat the emperor and uh, the Death Star, there's still a lot to do. Everything has changed, but the story isn't over. There's still evil to defeat. There's still people to save. There's still work to be done. This morning, as you and I face this Easter day, we know that Easter changed everything. And at the same time, the Easter story is a cliffhanger. Mark has left us to end the story. But with Easter, a new story has begun. Our story begins as we humans take on the mission to bring all the world to meet Jesus. We take on the mission to tell the world that Jesus forgives, that we can live in a new way, that we can live together forever in love. Over the following weeks here in worship at St. Mark's, we will focus on how the early church did just that in very messy ways. We haven't always gotten it right, but we strive as Easter people to invite others to meet Jesus, see how Jesus has changed our lives. Friends, I pray this Easter leaves you amazed and trembling in a good way. I pray this Easter that you are eager for the kind of change that Jesus brings. I pray that you are ready to leave the tomb and enter a new life, a new hope, a new love. I pray that you might hear Jesus calling, come and go. Today, may the tomb be opened and our lives be changed. May God's power bring life to death. May we be transformed to live in love and justice. When our sins drive us away, may we run into the arms of Jesus instead. And may the love of God leave us trembling and amazed. Let us pray. Loving God, we are so very grateful for the gift of life that you give, for the invitation to finish the story of your love for this world. God, we are grateful for the invitation that we have to receive the good news, to receive the life that you offer, to receive the love that you have for us. May we go from this place sharing the good news of Christ to a world that needs to know Christ is Lord. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. I invite you to sing together our response. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. Let us sing.
God has given us hope in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Confident in the gift of grace won at Calvary, let us offer our hearts and the fruit of our labor to God's service. Your offering placed in our Easter envelopes will be used to invite others in our community around us into a life with the resurrected Christ. Our ushers come to receive the gifts of your tithes and offerings, as well as your attendance and prayer cards.
Almighty God, by your grace, accept the fruit of our labor and the offering of our lives in union with our risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever. Amen. Please remain standing and join in our closing hymn.
Amen. Amen. As you go from this place, go knowing the world has changed because of the love of God that we know in Christ Jesus. Go inviting others to share that good news. Go in the name of God, our Father, His Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before you leave, we invite you to head over to the Welcome Center. Our youth have packaged up brunch for you to take with you. We invite you to come back next week as we have Holy Humor Sunday. And we invite you to sing along with our Alleluia Chorus.